Round two of Superlap Scotland sees the Championship head south of the border to Croft and Darlington. Piggybacking on the DDMC Saloon Car Festival, a guest grid slot for Superlap Scotland was on hand and a good entry of cars making the trip down for the lovely brand new surface that Croft has to offer. And let's see how everybody got on. Smiling faces as ever in the paddock, housed in the pit lane garages, Superlap Scotland was officially on tour. The brand new track surfaced at Croft required a track walk and just about all the drivers decided to take advantage of this time we had on the Sunday morning to go around and find out just exactly what the surface looks like and if it's changed from the last time they were there or find out some little pointers and helpful information from Championship Coordinator Duncan Vincent. <laughs> So after some words of wisdom, three 20 minute sessions, all cars on track, points for qualifying and the finals, a slightly different format, but a slightly exciting format as well. And as practice and qualifying got underway, the Saloon Car Festival, yeah, yeah, a lot of people taking a lot of interest into Superlap Scotland. As ever, the usual finding your feet through qualifying and practice was interesting to say the least, Nick Cook running out of road going through the chicane there and that chicane extremely fast and Alan Stewart there big issue for him going off at sunny now that's a fast place to go off you enter that extremely quick but it wasn't just sunny it was coming into the complex gave Alan Stewart a bit of a complex as well managed to get the car back around facing the right direction and he was able to join safely unlike Sebastian Vettel Jordan Smith, well the man only knows one way and look at him hanging the back of that car out as we jump on board with David Long and David with a beautiful four wheel drift there going through Sunny out as he come up towards the complex you can see the car was just floating through the track and underneath Stuart McCracken he goes and Stephen Henderson in front of him there but the guy's been very respectful of people on track Henderson staying well out of the way, waving David past and David Long, well he's a man who was on a bit of a mission through qualifying, David would come home in third place overall with a 1 minute 30.888. And it was this man, Paul Rankin. Great to see him there, but a last minute addition to the actual series for the weekend. But yeah, he wasn't the only man with issues, it was Alan Stewart, James McElhaney there. Yeah, and that happened at great speed going in towards Barcroft and the sunny area of the track. Easily the fastest part of the circuit where you're grabbing fourth, fifth gear heading towards him. Fraser Huntley as well, we saw him flashing through shot there. Fraser, another man who unfortunately had mechanical gremlins all the way through the course of the weekend and ultimately paid the price and we didn't see him towards the end of it. Now in the track walk, somebody was told to stay off that apex kerb there. Andy Taylor almost rolling his beautiful little escort off that kerb. And did that do damage internally to the engine? The height that car went up, well, it may have because it was going to rear its ugly head for Andy later on through the course of the day. Very lucky not to go upside down there. And the Mark Kemp show, yeah. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Mark Kemp. Fabulous car control in this Mazda MX-5. As you can see, the car looks like it's in a lovely little float through most of these corners. And Mark Kemp, yeah, a local round for Mark. Didn't have too far to travel. Ended up doing a 138 in qualifying, and he was quite happy with that. But I think the smile factor inside that helmet, he can just see it, basically. In towards the last corner goes Kemp. And another new man to the series was car number 50, Tom Porter, in his Fiesta. Tom using more track than he probably would like. But another man who knows his way around Croft and was going to get faster and faster as it went on. Alex Milne and Rab Jobson were sharing the Audi TT Aris Plus. Unfortunately, though, the car wasn't playing ball. Gearbox and clutch gremlins all the way through the course of qualifying really hampered their progress. And Jenny Muir. Jenny was a very late addition to the championship for Croft. Didn't know if she wanted to do it. After qualifying, though, the smile on Jenny's face was something to behold. She looked like she absolutely loved it and the progress was there to be seen. Her qualifying time was a 149.5 and she got quicker all the way. Matty Lawson, car number 98 in the pro class, fast as ever, and this is Fraser Huntley, the Nissan Silvia 200SX. Unfortunately though, yeah, it didn't play ball through the course of the day. When it was going though, it was fiendishly fast, and when it stopped, well, it seemed to stop for an awful long time. So the qualifying results, 
sees Paul Rankin, the fastest man off all out there. And he was ahead of Fraser Huntley and David Long. That's a top three overall. The class structure, a little bit different. The fastest in Class A was David Long. Class B, fastest man was Fraser Huntley, chased by Ben Robinson and Michael Rigby. Ian Pittman was the quickest man in Class C from Hamish Gordon and Steve Arkley. In Class D, Stephen Henderson, fastest from Robert Davey and Alex Milne. In Class E, Paul Bell was showing his class ahead of King of the Hill, Martin Brown and Ewan Fraser. And in Class F, Mark Kemp sliding his way to fastest ahead of Tom Locker and Sean Hislop. The G-Class car, well, Adam Morrison was fastest from Jamie Gowdy and Jenny Muir. And fastest man in pro was Colin Dorward. We did have four guests and the quickest guest and the fastest man overall was Paul Rankin. And he was ahead of Tom Porter and Andy Taylor. As we moved in towards the finals, Jenny Muir was first on track in her G-Class car and she did a 147.9. Chasing Jamie Gowdy all the way home in his MX-5 with a 142, 144.2. Adam Morrison was the Class G winner with a 142.5 and Adam, well, he went pretty well in the finals, got to be said, but he also done a lot of work for people throughout the course of the event. Simon McWilliam, fourth place in Class F and chasing well, chasing as good as he could, Sean Hislop in his Renault Clio with a 144.0. Third place for Sean Hislop, just behind 716, Tom Lockhart in his Renault Clio with a 143.4. And the fastest man in Class F was Sideways Man himself, the king of the slide, Mark Kemp with a 138.3 second lap. Just watch this. Carl Walker, car number 29, brand new to the series was 8th place in E-Class with a 146.2 and sideways Jordan Smith, well he's got a rival now in Mark Kemp hasn't he? Jordan and his Mark 1 Escort with 142.2 Alan Stewart managed to keep it on the black stuff to come home in 6th place in Class E with a 141.5 and Andy Napier, 333 in his Honda Civic Type R a 141.45th place 4th place for McKelney in his Subaru Impreza when he was on the track with a 140.465 and in third place it was Ewan Fraser in his Janetta G40R with a 139.0 second place was Martin Brown as we go on board with Martin good camera angle was going through the fastest part of the circuit coming up to Barcroft second overall for the Impreza WRX with a 136.8 and then Paul Bell car number 87 though was the fastest man in Class E only two tenths of a second faster than Martin Brown, 136.639 for Paul Bell in his Renault Clio Cup car. For D Class, fifth place was Alex Milne in his Audi TTRS Plus with a 153.8, but the gearbox gremlins had been horrible to Alex through qualifying and the final. And there, there we go, Milne with more car trouble. It just didn't work in the final as well. In fourth place, it was car number 58, Stuart McCracken, in his Caterham. Stuart, happy with his lap time, 148.6, and making progress all the way through as much as he possibly could, as we see him coming through sunny in and then sunny out in his number 58 Caterham. 148.674, good enough for fourth place. Rab Jobson tried to get the Audi going as well, but yeah, you could just see how off the pace the car was with a 143.1, Jobson and Milne. Yeah, they didn't have a good weekend at all. In second place, it was Robert Davey in his Lotus Elise S Cup car with a 140.945. But the fastest person in Class D was Stephen Henderson in the Silver Riot. 135.3, five seconds up on anybody else. Stephen gelled with the track and the reliability of this car is becoming second to none. For a car that used to always appear in a Toro, it's absolutely flying now. Steve Arkley was third place in C-Class in his Westfield Megabooster with a 139.8. And he chased the man who drove all the way down from Glenrothes, Hamish Gordon, in his Ultima GTR 135.5. Fastest man in Class C, though, was Ian Pittman. And Ian did an astounding lap of 133.030, two and a half seconds faster than Hamish Gordon as we ride on board with Pittman through Clairvaux into turn two. Good run for Ian Pittman. Very smooth, very in control, and extremely fast.
Moving into B class, second place for car 71, Ben Robinson in the Noble M12, but unfortunately for Ben also, mechanical issues and led to believe it was Gearbox 145.588. He will be back for round three and four at Nokia Racing Circuit for Superlap Scotland, but unfortunately, Gearbox issues not helping the cause. Michael Rigby was a Class B winner and he's super impressive with a 140.357. Rigby, just listen to those tyres howling all the way through Hawthorne up towards the S's. Good stuff from him. Nick Cook was fourth place in the guest class in car number 89, our AET Motorsport man. 137.7 and he was chased, well he was chasing his teammate Andy Taylor. Andy managed a 137.004, 8 tenths faster than Nick. But remember that big two-wheel moment we saw Andy having? Yeah, did it starve the engine of oil? Well, it might have, because the car let go spectacularly in the final, on the run down the main street into turn one. Game over for car number 90, Andy Taylor. Good enough for third place, though. Tom Porter, yeah, wow, watch this. Big, big spin for Tom Porter in car number 50, but good enough for second place, it was a 136. 0.433 and a great addition to Superlap Scotland. We hope to see Tom Porter at Knockhill in the not too distant future. Fastest in the guest class was Paul Rankin, the man who knows his way around Croft extremely well. He finished 1.4 seconds up on Tom Porter with a 1. 34.971 and the A-class winner unfortunately only one A-class this weekend David Long and David still got it wrong there a bad downshift with the auto blip gave the car a bit of full throttle and off went David in towards the last corner a very un-David Long manoeuvre but still he's lapped in 133.014 very very fast for Long as we go on board with David just look how little movement goes through the steering wheel on a Caterham to get you through these corners On to the pro class, second place, car number 98, Matty Lawson in his Mitsubishi Evo 5 RS, 133.745 for Matty Lawson and he chased home the man who was fastest in pro class and fastest overall on the day. It had been plain sailing for Colin Dorward though, 129.585. Dorward had mechanical issues in Gremlins all the way through the day but he saved his best for the last. Flashing lights on for Colin Dorward, former king of the hill, came away with the fastest time overall on the day, a 129.585. So let's take a look at the winners for each class. G-class honours go to Adam Morrison, the F-class goes to Mark Kemp, Paul Bell was fastest in E-class, with Stephen Henderson quickest of the Ds. Quickest C-class car was Ian Pittman with a very fast lap time overall. Michael Rigby took the B-class honours, A-class went to David Long, the fastest guest was Paul Rankin, and there was four of them. And the fastest man overall on the day and in pro class was that man, Colin Dorward. So as ever, the paddock gathered for the prize giving in the Croft Guest Centre. Lovely for us to be able to hold the prize giving in there and a full turnout so everybody get a nice round of applause and collect their trophies for their positions overall on the day. And a great, great turnout of drivers all the way down from Superlap Scotland area to visit the DDMC meeting at Croft Race Circuit. The next round of Superlap Scotland is the 15th and 16th of June at Nokia Racing Circuit with the 15th being reverse direction and the 16th being normal clockwise featuring the Rockstar Energy Chase Race as well. Why not get yourself along for some more fabulous SLS racing along with the Northern Sports and Saloon Cars, the Junior Saloons and the BMW Compact Cup.